Hello, welcome to today's Monday Manna. As always, we pray that we find you in good health and in great spirits. This week, we are starting our series on contentment, um, a glimpse into com contentment using the a glimpse into contentment Bible study. I hope you were able to download download yours from either the YouTube platform or Facebook. Just look under Danette Hutchinson Monday Mana on YouTube, and um, there's an introduction video. And in that introduction video description box is the link that will take you to the PDF for this Bible study. On Facebook, you'll have to search under Danette Hutchinson um, in the search box. And in one of the posts that I've done um, on this particular Bible study, there is a link as well uh, that will take you to the PDF. So if you haven't gotten it, I encourage you to go ahead and do that. And let's pray so we can get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, your loving kindness. Thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing. Thank you for your care, your compassion, your consideration toward us. We thank you for the giving of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ, who uh, redeemed us from our sins and reconciled us back to you, that we can truly call you Abba, Father, our Father, 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 <laughs> the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God of loving kindness, the Most High God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who leads and guides us into all truth to help us understand the text, the context, the pretext of the scriptures that we may truly be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. Father, we thank you that you are growing us up in the things of God and that you are shaping our character to mimic the character of Christ, for it is written in your word that we are being conformed into the image of your son. And so we appreciate that. We honor you for that and we exalt you for that. We thank you for this Bible study. We pray as always that something would be said to encourage the heart, the hope, the faith, the trust, the confidence of the hearer in you and in you alone, the one who loves us the most and knows us the best. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? We are going to get into this Bible study. We're working on week one, so let me do a little bit of um, administrative house cleaning here. On the PDF, when you download it, you will see that the PDF itself will state um, day one, uh, day two, through day five, but we are only using this on a weekly basis for Monday Manna. And so our day one will be our week one, our day two in the PDF will be Monday Manna week two and so forth as we work through this, uh, this PDF. And, and I've already begun to work through mine and I'm telling you, it, it's, it's gonna be a winner, a winner, winner, chicken dinner for all, well, a winner, winner, plant-based dinner <laughs> and for all who will come to the table and partake. Speaking of which, I encourage you to check out the banqueting table um, married to or tied to uh, Everyday Rehab under Diana L. Green. You will be blessed by her ministry. All right, so here we go. We are on day one. And in the PDF, it's asking us to define Old Testament contentment and evaluating our own contentment. So while we're going through this Bible study, you're going to find out that there'll be opportunities for you to uh, review, kind of step back, take an inner view of what's going on inside of you. Um, I believe contentment um, is the greater gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I also believe that this is an area where if we are not mindful and self-aware, we can get caught up in some 
areas and some things that we just don't want to be caught up in um, because we've opened a door of discontentment, which is the other side of what this Bible study is going to be talking about as well. So it's contentment on one end, discontentment on the other end, and we need to be aware of where we are at any given time. We also need to be open for the Holy Spirit to convict us in our hearts about uh, if we are leaning more toward the, the side of discontentment. I want to take you to a scripture. I'm going to take you to this scripture that just came to my mind in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 10. Here we go with this. <laughs> Here we go with this little gnat. I don't know what's going on with it, but we're moving forward anyway. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, there is a huge picture of what discontentment looks like. Okay. We're not going to stay on discontentment too much today, but I do want us to always keep that in mind. There is an opposite of contentment and it is discontentment. Okay. First Corinthians 10, starting at verse one in the new, the King James version, it says, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. Hold on a second. Let me adjustment. There we go. I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the Red Sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So the in the midst of their wilderness experience, God was there with them right there in the midst of their wilderness experience. Listen, verse five, but with many of them, God was not pleased for they, he was not pleased because they were overthrown in the wilderness. What does that tell us? That tells us that God does not want us to be overthrown in the wilderness. He wants us, even in our wilderness experiences, where we are prone to walk in a spirit of discontentment, but he wants us to make it through our wilderness experiences with a godly attitude. But with many of them, God was not, was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Verse six says, now these, these things were our examples to the intent or for the reason that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. They were discontent, discontented. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Party over here, party over here. Now let us, let neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. I'm telling you, their wilderness, this wilderness experience for some of them was not a great thing. <laughs> They didn't handle it well. And so that's why we're going to be talking about contentment because in the days that are coming, there's going to be opportunity to be discontented, this, to walk in discontentment. But if we understand what contentment is, what the blessing of contentment is, that godliness with contentment truly is the greater gain than anything else, we'll make it through our wilderness experiences I want to say pretty well, well off. I can't judge what other people go through. So I just want to generically say we will make it through our wilderness with a proper attitude. Amen. So neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, 20 and 3000. Ooh, Lord, I will say that. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition. They were, they were written. These things happened unto them for examples unto us. But we weren't there. 
We were not in that wilderness experience. We were not experiencing the same things that they were experiencing. Had some of us been in that same place, we probably would have behaved the exact same way. Now, all these things happened unto them for examples, and they were written for our admonition or our example or our learning upon whom the ends of the world are come. You know, we are... I'm not going to say we are the generation, but we are definitely closer to Christ's return than those who were in this wilderness were. Amen. So it says, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Stop. This temptation area is an open door. It, well, let me say this area of temptation um, feeds on discontentment. They, they're kind of road dogs that, you know, <laughs> they're kind of ride and ride or die cock. Uh, discontentment and temptation. They, you know, they work in the same building. They, they kind of have lunch together. They eat dinner together. They, they probably sleep in the same bed together. Discontentment and temptation. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. We're going to find in our study of contentment that it is going to be rooted in the faithfulness of God, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. I'm going to read this out of a couple more translations. Just that last um, verse, 13. God wants us to have a spirit of contentment while we're going through our challenges and our situations. He doesn't want us to respond as they responded in the wilderness, um, as it is written in 1 Corinthians 10. Let me go to the Living Bible. I just want verse 13. It says, but remember this, the wrong desires that come into your life aren't anything new and different. Let me read that again. First Corinthians 10, 13 out of the Living Bible says, remember this, the wrong desires that come into your life, come into my life, aren't anything new and different. Same old game. Same old temptation. Many others have faced exactly the same problems before you. That's something that we can hold on to. That is something that we can actually hold on to while we are working through our problems. Many others have faced exactly the same problems before you. And no temptation is irresistible. No temptation is irresistible. And, and you might say, well, yes, it is. It's irresistible. Well, it depends on what the temptation is. If you are a lover of uh, triple chocolate cake and you're saying, I'm on a diet and I'm not going to eat triple chocolate cake anymore. And yet at the potluck at work on Monday, somebody brings in a triple chocolate cake and it's only one slice and there's 10 people in the office, it's one slice <laughs> and only one person is going to be able to get that cake, um, you might be tempted a little bit. So no temptation is irresistible, but you can trust God to keep that temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it for he has promised this and will do what he says. He will show you how to escape temptation's power so that you can bear up patiently against it. That is the will of God. That is the word of God. That is the will and the mind of Christ concerning us in our challenging situations. It's in challenging situations. It is in tests and trials. It is in wilderness environments where we are tempted the most to complain, to murmur, uh, to get into strifeful situations. And so the Lord wants us, his body of believers, 
to understand, to gain, to embrace this blessing of contentment. So that's what we're going to be um, discussing and talking about this first week. All right. So here we go. On the first uh, page. Let's see. The first page here. All right. So they ask a question on page one. It's actually page three of the PDF. They ask a question. They say, where would you rank your contentment today? So remember, this is a personal Bible study. Um, even if you're doing it as a couple between, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, or you're doing it as a group, or you're doing it, you know, um, husband and wife, however you're doing it, just keep in mind that the Bible study itself is geared toward personal reflection. Okay, so it says, where would you rank contentment today in your life? Between one and 10, where would you rank it? And then on the PDF, you want to circle the appropriate rank, okay? And then what areas do you feel most discontented in? It gives us a whole list of items that we can check off if appropriate. What areas do you feel most discontented? Listen to these options. Listen to these options. Work, marriage, children, friendships, church, personal ministry, excitement or adventure. Now that's, isn't that interesting? <laughs> excitement or adventure. Hold on one minute. Um, I'm going to open this up on my screen here. There we go. Excitement or adventure, status or success. Oh, that's one, isn't it? Status or success, image, possessions, house, car, clothing, that that's, um, encompasses possession. So anything that you own. Um, finances. Do you feel like you're content with your finances? Are you discontented with your finances? And then there's an option for other where you can fill in the blank, um, fill in your own blank. Okay. Uh, then it goes on to talk about, so let, I'm interested to know <laughs> which one of these you actually feel the most discontented in or which ones you would feel the most discontented in. So on the YouTube channel, there should be an opportunity for you to uh, post your, if you want to, there's no obligation, but if you want to post your thoughts about where you may feel the most discontented, if you'd like to share with, um, with the group. Okay. So let me go over those again. Work, marriage, children, friendships, church, personal ministry. Let me stop there and talk about personal ministry for just a minute. And I'm going to try not to make this too long of a video. Personal ministry is a huge one. And the reason why personal ministry is a huge object lesson here is because oftentimes, um, we will be challenged to compare our ministry to other ministries. We'll be challenged to compare our success in ministry to other success, other success stories in ministry. And then we try to, um, we may try, we may be uh, pushed to um, try to compare ourselves to the point where we start implementing things in our personal ministry that the Lord did not tell us to implement. What you're going to find that this contentment is also based on obedience to um, the word of the Lord and what he has said to you um, about a certain matter. So personal ministry is huge, 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 huge. It is a huge thing for, for us who are in ministry to stay in the lane that God has called you to. 
I encourage you. I implore you. I beg of you. Stay in the lane where God has called you to. All right. So other areas where you might be discontented. And if you are discontented in personal ministry and you find yourself trying to example yourself after another ministry, um, we're going, as we work through these weeks, uh, I believe all of that hopefully will begin to slough off of you and you'll find that whatever God has called you to, it is sufficient. Whatever assignment he's given you, it is more than enough. Amen. And he's given you the stuff that's needed for the assignment. All right. Excitement and adventure. How many of you are bored? You're just bored. We just got finished with a summer holiday for the kids being out of school. So I know a lot of you probably may have been able to go traveling and do some adventurous things with your kids and do some new things that you've not ever done, visited places where you've never been. But that time is over. The kids are back in school. And how many of you are concerned about being bored again? So that might be an area where you're discontented. Excited excitement and adventure. Um, status and success. There's so much going on in the media. It is so obvious on the social platforms, Instagram and um, uh, YouTube even. And uh, I don't even know all of the social platform, uh, social media platforms, but those platforms, even magazines and, and uh areas where people have an opportunity to display their success, kind of splash it all over the front page. And then you're looking at that and in your inner heart, you're like, wow, I wish that was me. What about your image? What about the things that you own? Are you discontented? Do you want more? Do you want better? What about your finances? Are you content with just having enough or, or do you have to have more? And is that more tied to your self-image, your self-confidence, and how other people may view you? Those are just a few things to think about, okay? So as we look into this Bible study, in the Old Testament, there are some questions here for you to answer. It's talking about being content is generally associated with moderation, right? More uh, Enough, <laughs> Enough, be content with such things that you have. A sense of God's guidance and readiness for obedience. Obedience is going to be a great key in all of this. This interpretation can easily be seen in Leviticus. Now, I read this Leviticus chapter 10. It talks about Aaron and his sons and how they had entered into this assignment that God had given them for them to go into this priesthood um, this priestly assignment and his sons, two of his sons offered unauthorized um, incense. They offered unauthorized fire and the holiness of God killed them on the spot, killed them on the spot. Remember, this is Old Testament, killed them on the spot. And there's Aaron in this new position. He's got four sons. Two of them are dead now. He's got two more that are still in the priestly office with him. And they go in and they take um, the sacrificial meat and they don't eat it according to the regulations and guidelines and commands that God has laid out. And um, they were, they too, um, incurred some anger from God. And Aaron was explaining to Moses that um, he didn't eat the meat. He didn't eat the, the offering because of what he had already gone through. It doesn't say that God was mad at Aaron, but it does say that Moses was angry at him. And so after Aaron explained why he did what he did um, in a more, Aaron was walking in integrity as far as he knew. Um, it says that Moses's anger was appeased. He was content. <laughs> he was content with Aaron. Okay. So content, let's look at this word a little, um, a little further. According to the Strong's Concordance, this scripture couples two Hebrew words, yatab and ayin, ayin. Yatab literally means sound and figuratively means right. 
Um, and ayin means an eye, which is translated outward appearance, okay? So literally it has to do with how you're behaving outwardly. It is how you see things and how you are behaving outwardly in the sight of God, okay? There's an opportunity here based on this scripture as you read it and Bible commentaries to define the Old Testament meaning of content. And I'm going to read that. And then I'm going to quickly go through these other two pages here. Um, what I wrote down as um, defining Old Testament contentment was to be satisfied or pleased, to be free from care because of satisfaction with what one already has. And that came from BibleStudyTools.com. And then the Holman Bible Dictionary gives us this definition, an internal satisfaction which does not demand changes in external circumstances. Let me read that again. This is from the Holman Bible Dictionary, explaining or defining contentment, an internal satisfaction which does not demand changes in external circumstances. I know some of us said, hmm, <laughs> does not demand changes in external circumstances. Listen to this Amplified uh, Bible definition. Godliness, it is the actual text, but godliness actually is a source of great gain when it is accompanied by contentment, that contentment which comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. So with those definitions, to put it in a nutshell, then contentment has everything to do with God being the nucleus of any given situation or circumstance. And that's what we're going to, um, just to give you uh, some work to do. <laughs> if you love Bible studies, this is going to be a great one on cont uh, contentment to help us understand how to settle ourselves down as believers, how to settle down in God, settle down in your heart, settle down in your spirit, settle down in your mind, settle down in your emotions, settle down in your thought processes and let contentment which is greater gain. Godliness with contentment is the greater gain. Let contentment, the Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful in Colossians 3.15. So that's what we're going to be working on. That's what we're going to be studying for these next five weeks. I said to the Lord a few minutes ago, I would say what he prompted in my heart to say. And it is this, there is a spirit in the church that is being released, hear this with your spiritual ears, that is being released to stir up a sense of discontentment among the believers, among the body of Christ, it doesn't matter what office you're in or anything like that, but there is a spirit of discontentment that is being stirred up among believers based upon what somebody has and what somebody doesn't have, based upon what somebody's able to do and what somebody's not able to do, and also based upon um, having and ha having not, I'm just going to leave it at that, having and having not. And so the, the, the devil has come in, he has quietly come into the place of worship and is stirring up this me, my, and I spirit. When we are supposed to be a unified body of believers through the spirit of God in love, 
in unity, in sanctification for the will of God to be done collectively in and through us and individually. This me, my, and I spirit is not from God. It is from the pits of hell and it is sent to bring division in the body of Christ. And God wants us to be content. He wants us to trust him. He wants our faith to be extended to him. He wants our submission to be extended to him, to know that whatever assignment he has given you, it is sufficient. And in that, that assignment, you will be ultimately fulfilled. Thank you for joining me today. I'm looking forward to next week. Again, go ahead and click on the link in the description box um, on the YouTube channel, Danette Hutchinson Monday Mana, or on my Facebook page, Danette Hutchinson, and uh, pull down this PDF. I promise you it's going to be a blessing. It will strengthen your resolve to do the will of God. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you next Monday on Monday Mana. And have a great Labor Day. Amen.